then what should you what should you do? Put in the resources. Where do you get them from? Inside you. It's inside you. It's not in the north, east, south, or west. It's inside you. If you won't bring it out from inside you, it will not come out. It's inside you. I told you. Jesus said, all right, who's supposed to be paying taxes? Aren't they troubling us for nothing? The disciples said, yeah, Lord. He said, well, let's not offend them. Put your hook into the water and the first fish that you catch he said bring it out and take a coin out of its mouth not its belly out of its mouth the coin will be in its mouth he says take it and pay for both of us the money was in the fish's mouth what Jesus said to his disciples I'm going to make you fishers of men. Did you, did you understand that? It's in the fish's mouth. I'll go into that in a different, on a different subject on its own. All right? In Deuteronomy chapter 8 and verse 18, he tells us something. Look at it quick. Deuteronomy chapter 8 and verse number 18. But thou shalt remember the Lord thy God, for it is he that giveth thee what? Power to get wealth. The power of resources. The power to get wealth. That he may establish his covenant, which he served unto thy fathers as it is this day. It is God that gives you what? Power to get wealth. Have you ever been in that situation where you needed money to do some things and the money just wasn't there? And you were thinking, God, what do I do? Listen, if you ever find yourself at that point and you think, I wish I had the money, I wish I had this, the more you think like that, the more you drown. That's like Peter walking on the water. He sees the waves and he starts drowning. And what did the master say? The Bible says the master caught him immediately. What did he say? He says, why did you doubt? He didn't say, oh, the water where you were was too soft. He said, why did you doubt? Jesus knew the reason for the man sinking. He said, why did you doubt? The reason he was sinking was because he looked at the waves. He looked at the waves. His attention was on the waves. Jesus called him. He forgot who called him. So he began to drown. The Bible says Jesus caught him immediately and said, why did you doubt? When you doubt, you start drowning. And you think it's the, it's the situation. No, you're not drowning because of the situation. You're not drowning because of circumstances. You're not drowning because of what you're going through. You're not drowning because something here or there or there. It's what you're looking at. And so you doubt and you go down. You're weakened. You go down. Jesus caught him. So why did you doubt? Listen. And listen hard. We have. We come from a lineage. Of miracle workers. And hear me. Hear me well. God is not working in the miracles today. Don't deceive yourself. He's not. Jesus is not working in the miracles today. Don't deceive yourself. He's not. Jesus is seated. He is not working. 
he is seated waiting until his enemies be made his footstool waiting that's what the bible says sitting and waiting he is not performing miracles you have to understand the difference between our generic communication in general meetings where sinners and babies are so we say god is going to do whatever it is like god's going to heal you today uh, god's going to god's going to god's going to do this god is he that's a general truth that's a lesser truth lesser lights the bible talks about lesser lights and greater lights that's a lesser light that's a lesser truth it is a truth but a lesser truth because in reality he is not doing any work he is in his sabbath he is in his sabbath and that's what the bible tells us he's not working He's not working. The Bible says all the works were finished from the foundation of the world. And Jesus came and the Bible says in the volume of the book it is written of me. I come to do thy will, O God. And then the Bible says he did the will of God. He finished it. And he ascended. He's in heaven. He's not a miracle worker. He was a miracle worker. So who's performing the miracles today? Us. He sent us to go in his name. We are the miracle workers today. We come from that lineage of miracle workers. So today if you don't work the miracle, nothing will change. I hear what I'm telling you. If you don't work the miracle, nothing will change. So if you come to a crisis position you come to a place in your life where you're saying to yourself all right now I, I, I I'm in this situation and you think oh God oh God no as a babe you can call on God but when you cease to be a babe and you've grown up you use what he gave you if it's got to do with money Get it out of the fish's mouth. You've got to understand who you are. If you can be worried about you don't have this money, you don't have that money. If you get worried, you don't believe. You don't believe. You don't believe. The easiest thing in the world to get is money. Is the easiest thing in the world. Look at the whole world fighting over money. Look at it. There's hatred because of, the Bible says the love of money is the root of all evil. And it says because many have coveted after it, they've pierced themselves through with many sorrows. It's the easiest thing in the world. But you have to be ready to work and perform miracles. This is an excerpt from Pastor Chris' teaching. Other related messages available on Pastor Chris' digital library apps are... Do you know who I am? I made you. Trust me. You can depend on me. All things were made by me. I have integrity. All of this is not only authentic as communicated to us in the, in the scriptures, not only trustworthy, but it is delivered to us to live by. Discover the potency of the word and the result it will produce for you in this enlightening masterpiece, The Integrity of the Word. Available only on Pastor Chris Digital Library app. Download yours today. God bless you. The Love World App Store puts the power of the internet in your hands so you can open a page on your daily devotional and enjoy an uplifting day on the go with the Rhapsody of Realities app. 
watch faith stirring videos of testifiers and experience the healing school with pastor chris on the healing school app experience the supernatural touch of god as you participate in faith-filled programs airing on the love world stations you can even start watching on your small screen and finish it on your smart tv with the live tv app and if you love expressing yourself you can upload your creative videos and inspire your world from one place with C-Flix. Stay connected with your friends and loved ones by kinging on King's Jack. Take worship with you and minister to God with thousands of first-class tunes on this device or that one anywhere you go. With just a tap, experience Love World's finest technology all in one place. Get instant notifications when new updates are available. No extra cost necessary. No extra storage required. The Love World App Store. All your favorite apps in one store. Download now from www.lwappstore.com. You are watching Expose on Visualization. First Chronicles chapter 28. Verse 9. Your thinking should be like David. And thou, Solomon, my son, know thou the God of thy father. And serve him with a perfect heart. See, David is old now. David has brought his son to the throne. He's made Solomon king in his stead. Now he gives him last words before he dies. And thou, Solomon, my son, know thou the God of thy father, and serve him with a perfect heart and, a, and with a willing mind. Let this stay in you. A perfect heart and a willing mind. Write it down. And don't you ever forget it. A perfect heart and a willing mind. This is what God is asking for. A perfect heart and a willing mind. You've got to have both of them. A perfect heart. And a willing mind. Oh, hallelujah. For the Lord searcheth all hearts. And understandeth all the imaginations of the thoughts. Listen, he knows the imaginations of your thoughts. If thou seek him, he'll be found of thee. But if thou forsake him, he'll cast thee off forever. He's talking to his son. Strong words. And he goes on to tell him, you read this whole thing into the next chapter. Just read the whole of 28 and 29. He goes on to tell him how he had laid aside so much gold, resources for the building of God's house. Solomon was empowered with resources. He was empowered with resources. Where did David get that from? Don't forget his, his beginning. You remember? Yes, sir. A young lad. Shepherd boy. He didn't have anything. But God blessed him until he had so much. So now he gives his son a lot of wealth. And Solomon ascends the throne. And multiplies the wealth. He multiplies the wealth. He was so powerful. Wisdom without money. Not good. That's what the Bible tells us. It says wisdom without money. Not good. A man. With a powerful message. An important message. Without the resources. Not good. Not good. Not good. I tell people, you know, the Lord gave me an important message. A very important message. But he also gave me the resources to prosecute the vision. That's what he did. And he gave me a mind that knows no fear. Very important. A mind that is resistant to doubt. Yeah, it is important. 
When it comes to money, I'm like a child. I'm like a child. I don't think about how much it is, where it is coming from. I don't have that kind of thinking. Because that's the way I was when I started. I was a child when I started. I didn't know I needed money. So I was doing what I was doing. I didn't know I needed money. I didn't know that it cost so much. But then it was coming. Whenever I needed it, it came. So as I grew up, I refused to be a man in money. I wanted to be a child with it. Because I found out children have no problem about money. Men have trouble with money. Children don't. I remain a child with money. If you don't think in that dimension, money will hold you in bondage. You find that you want to do something, you are calculating like this, and then when it comes to God, God, you, you don't know what to do with God. You're thinking, how much you're going to give him? What? No. No. Think like a child. Think like it's always there. Think like it's always there. Think like it's in abundance. Think like that. Because it's true. Amen. You see, because it's true. Pastor Chris, does it happen to you sometimes? Like you want to think the other way? Of course the thoughts try to hit me. And they, when they're trying to come, I say, no, 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 I don't want to be like that. Never going to be like that. I don't think like that. I refuse to entertain the thoughts. Amen. It's just a simple thing you do. You switch your mind. Don't let it in. Listen, what I'm telling you is important. It's real. And that's the way. That's the way of faith. That's the way. Otherwise, you'd find that what you said Jesus did for you. You are working so hard to make it happen. I tell people, your job, your business is given to you as a responsibility, a way, a medium to bless the world. Don't see it as your source. Otherwise, it will destroy you. You see that that becomes your value. It becomes your value. Then it becomes your driving force. And that will determine how you go. So when there's a, a better offer, you move. And if things are happening, you move. Another offer, you go. So you might move five times in two years. Why? Because there was a better offer. And then while you were there, maybe things happened and then a downturn. And so you, you had to quit. You see, it, it, it's this way and that way. You know, you try to God. So look at what's happening with you. Say, I think differently. I think. Say it again. Say, I think differently. I think differently. Think differently. Yes, sir. Try what I'm sharing with you. Ooh. Try. Just maybe just five months. Even four. Even three. Just try it. Less than three may not stay. That is to say, it may not stick with you. I want something that sticks with you. You will be amazed. You will find that you are now like you're swimming. Your head is above the water and you're really swimming now. But if you continue in this other way, you, you are in the water and you are like struggling to breathe. But do what I tell you, your head above the water. Stay in the float. And you're going like this. Money. The power of resources. So, you come to the next one. The power of faith. Faith. Joshua chapter 14, verse number 6. Real quick now. Joshua chapter 14, verse number 6. We're going to read a few verses. Ready? Then the children of Judah came unto Joshua in Gilgal. And Caleb the son of Jephunneh 
the Kenizzite said unto him, Thou knowest, he's talking to Joshua. He and Joshua, well, you, you'll see it now. Thou knowest the thing that the Lord said unto Moses, the man of God, concerning me and thee in Kadesh Barnea. You remember that? Do you remember the story? You remember what he's referring to? Okay. Forty years old was I when Moses, the servant of the Lord, sent me from Kadesh Bane to espy out the land. And I brought him word again as it was in my heart. You see, he wasn't just trying to make it up. He said, as it was in my heart. That's the way I saw it. And that's how I declared it. Nevertheless, my brethren that went up with me made the heart of the people melt. But I wholly followed the Lord my God. Oh, hallelujah. I like this. Next verse. And Moses swore on that day, saying, Surely the land whereon thy feet have trodden shall be thine inheritance, and thy children's forever, because thou hast wholly followed the Lord my God. And now, behold, the Lord hath kept me alive, as he said, these forty and five years. So how old is he now? 85 years old. Great. Ever since the Lord spake this word unto Moses while the children of Israel wandered in the wilderness. And now, lo, I am this day four score and five years old. Wow, wow, wow. As yet, I am as strong this day as I was in the day that Moses sent me. He says, I'm 85 years old. I'm as strong this day as I was when I was 40. <laughs> As my strength was then, even so is my strength now for war, but to go out and to come in. Lanto rabaga saya lika rabababababaye. This is as I was then when I was forty. So am I now. I'm eighty-five. But to this is for war, but to go out and to come in. <laughs> Look at the next one. I like it. Now, therefore, give me this mountain what mountain is he asking for listen the giants in the land the giants in the land <sighs> now therefore give me this mountain whereof the Lord speak in that day for thou heardest in that day how the Anakims the giants were there and that the cities were great and fenced if so be the Lord will be with me, then I shall be able to drive them out, as the Lord said. Hallelujah. If the Lord will be with me, he says, that's all I need. This is an excerpt from Pastor Chris' teaching. You can get the complete message on the Pastor Chris Digital Library, available on the Love Old App Store. Join us tomorrow as we give you another teaching excerpt on an expose on visualization. To get messages, kindly visit the Pastor Chris Digital Library, available on the Love Old App Store. God bless you.